exciting to the enrollment of a bill uh, that has passed the House of Representatives and, and the Senate, and now will go over to the Senate to be signed by the Vice President of the United States or his designee. But I, my honor is to sign the Speaker of the House. But I sign it in honor of our conferees. They did a spectacular job. And Chair of the Appropriations Committee, Nina Lowy, uh, the Chair of the Homeland Security Sub Subcommittee of Appropriations, uh, Lucille Royal Allard, uh, Henry Quay Henry Quayor, Henry Quayor from Texas, the Rio Grande, Rio Grande Valley, Pete Aguilar from California, uh, Bar a member of the, all members of the committee, Barbara Lee, leadership member of the conferees. David Price, I'm sure David is, but David had quite a day because he had to go uh, to North Carolina uh, earlier today. But he was a former top Democrat on the Homeland Security Committee and was a, a, a very strong uh, force for uh, for doing the right thing. Anyway, uh, Stanley and Mr. Kyber and I are appropriators, so we have compliments in the appropriators, as I've said over and over, left to their own devices. Uh, working in a bipartisan way and a bicameral way, uh, they can come up with a compromise that, that is acceptable and that is bipartisan, as I said, uh, that we can all support 300 votes on the floor of the House. It was quite a remarkable show. And it's, uh, I just, for my own part, want to say uh, that I thank our companies uh, for having us honor our oath of office to protect our country by securing our border and protecting our values. And where we go from here will be for us all to honor the Constitution, especially Article One, uh, especially the uh, system of checks and balances. We will not have an end run around the Congress of the United States. And with that, I am delighted to use my pen. Well, I'm, I'm very pleased that we're at this point in time so much. But we ought to remind ourselves this is uh, last year's work, uh, and it didn't get done. But I want to congratulate the chair of the full committee and the chair of the subcommittee and the conferees uh, for getting this work done. Uh, my objective will be, and I've talked to Chairwoman Lowy about this, my objective will be as the majority leader uh, to make every effort to get our appropriation bills done in a timely fashion so that we do not confront, uh, again, the threat of or the actual shutdown of the government of the United States. That is not uh, a policy that ought to be uh, repeated, and we will certainly try not to do that. But uh, congratulations to the committee and to the conferees, and very frankly to uh, the Republican and Democratic conferees who all stood on the floor and supported the passage of this, knowing that we needed to get our work. Well, I, uh, I certainly associate myself with the comments you just heard from our leader. Uh, and I want to add my congratulations to you, Nina. Uh, thank you so much for this. And my classmate, uh, Lucille. Uh, this, I'm so proud of her. I went to her on the floor tonight just to talk to her and to say how much uh, I appreciate the work we did on this. You know, I, uh, this afternoon, I spent a lot of time on the phone with a lot of people. As uh, the leader said, uh, I had a few telephone conversations with uh, uh, the minority whip, uh, Mrs. Gleese, uh, and we were bargaining for 70 votes. And we came up with, uh, what, 85? 87. 87. Uh, so we thanked them as well for making this a real, genuine bipartisan effort. That's what the country wants from us, to work together, 
get the people's work done. And I want to thank uh, these companies uh, for the work they did, creating an atmosphere that they need to get the people's work done. Thank you. Thank you. Just again, simply, the, the effort of our conferees, the guidance of our speaker, uh, and the work of what was absolutely needed to ensure that this could get done. Um, as Mr. Clyburn and Mr. Hoyer clearly laid out the importance of the bipartisan work uh, to get everything done uh, for the good of the country. Um, also looking at important modern investments when it comes to border security, but the work of the conferee is also built upon the humanitarian responsibilities that we have uh, to make a difference uh, with these important critical infrastructure investments across the country. So again, Nita, um, Lucille, our, our two chairs, uh, but of course, the work of Pete and Henry and Barbara and David, I, I couldn't thank you enough. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, I just want to add to what my colleagues said, because at a time like this, where public political discourse has been so crude, I was so proud as the chair of this committee, working with outstanding conferees, to be able to work in a bipartisan way and really accomplish our goals, serve the people of the United States. So let's hope, because I'm always an optimist, that we can continue this tone, because we have a lot of work to do. As we complete this bill, we have to begin on 2020, where we have 12 new bills that we have to work on. And I really do hope that we can work together in a civil way, accomplish our goals, and serve the people of the United States of America. That's the way this project should, process should work. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, for chairing the joint bicameral uh, conference in such a distinguished and effective way. Congresswoman Morgan Allen. Alexia is here for this year. No, I think this is uh, an example of how we can all come together and work as a team. And I was very, very fortunate to have conferees that were committed to making sure that this whole process was one in which we could be proud of. They were totally committed. We worked together. And we had as our focus to make sure that the security of our nation was a priority, coupled with the fact that we made, had to make sure that it also represented our American values. And we were able to do that in a bipartisan way, in a way that respected the differences of opinion, not only within our own Democratic caucus, but also uh, our Republican uh, counterparts. And because we work in this bipartisan way, respecting each other with the same focus of getting something done to make sure the government was not shut down, but that our product was one that we could all feel good about, this is the result, and I can't say enough about the conferees. They were absolutely incredible. And in the end, when we reached uh, about as far as we could go, the four corners met, and it was Nita who hit that home run to them going the game. Thank you very much, Cecile. Before I yield to our distinguished member of the leadership who was a conferee, Congressman Barbara Lee, I want to acknowledge that we're joined by Congressman Steve Cohen, of Tennessee and Congressman Paul Tonko of New York. Thank you for helping us in our effort. Yes, said Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you very much. And I first have to thank you, Speaker, for, for putting together such a, a great yeah, I did. person. For <laughs> 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 putting together such a great team. And congratulate Chairwoman uh, Lowy and Roy Bell Allen for your uh, tremendous leadership and your uh, attention to all of the members of the Democratic Caucus and working in a bipartisan way, these leaders champion the views and the ideas and the input of our entire caucus. And so that is quite a testament, I think, to their leadership, but also to the diversity of our caucus and to the willingness to make sure that all of our voices were heard for the people. So I just have to thank you once again. And it was an honor to serve uh, as the leadership representative on this conference committee and say uh, we have a lot more to do, but we came a long way and we did that because of how you work collaboratively in a bipartisan way with all of our caucus members.
to make sure that all of these youths were champions and fought for us. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Cuellar? Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Thank you again for your leadership for putting this uh, very diverse but very united um, uh, Compre uh, committee together. And we want to thank you, of course, Steny and uh, Mr. Kyber and, and, and the other folks that you know, worked real hard to make sure that we all got over, well, I think, 300 votes today. A strong bipartisan vote. You know, what we did in this committee was very simple. It, it was a matter of how do you see the border? Unfortunately, there are some people that see the border as a crisis, as a, as a place that's out of control. But if you, uh, for us to live on the border, for us to have been and spend a lot of time on the border, we see the border as opportunity and community, a place where you know, we see trade, a place where we see tourism, where we want to raise our families and, uh, uh, and, and send our kids to school and start our businesses. That's the two visions we saw uh, from from the, certainly from the president and, and the opposite that we saw. From there, we were able to put those visions together and find a balance. We don't believe in open borders. We want to see smart border security, not a 14th century uh, uh, wall that the president believes in, but we want to find the balance between security and legitimate trade and tourism. And this is what the committee was able to do. By getting together, we were able to find that balance and people have asked me, who won on this one? You know what we did? The American public won on this one. So thank you, Madam thank you, thank Speaker. You, thank you. Mr. Cuellar? Uh, I just wanted to thank... Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, Mr. That's why I, <laughs> I can yield the back. Aguilar, I can, I can, California. If you give Henry more time, he will use That's what we learned in this conference committee. Thank you so much, Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> And the press line. Uh, thank you so much, Speaker. They understood. Thank you, Speaker, for, for placing me on this. It's such a distinguished group, and I was just honored to, to learn uh, from uh, Chair Lilly and, and Chair Lovell Allard uh, throughout this process. Uh, this was a collaborative process uh, for those asking questions about how we work. We worked well together. We had each other's backs uh, because we knew we were fighting for the values of our caucus, the values uh, of, of the American people, securing our borders honoring our values uh, and ensuring uh, that we avoided a shutdown, another senseless shutdown. So those were, that was our North Star moving, uh, moving through this process. I was just honored to be on the team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, we also had six other bills and we were very proud to work that our other uh, the chairs of subcommittees did. Many of them spoke on the floor during the debate, but so it was a major accomplishment. Six bills that dealt with other departments of government, and then the uh, one that most attention, Homeland Security. So thank you to all of you for uh, protecting our borders, honoring our values, keeping government open, and strengthening the institution in which we serve, the Congress of the United States. So thank all of you. Happy Valentine's Day. We saluted our victory, or the victory for the American people, earlier with chocolate, chocolate from <laughs> California. I call it the champagne of chocolate. And so, uh, again, I wish you all happy Thanksgiving. Keep on going. Madam Speaker, what you most for chance we're getting other bills done in a bipartisan fashion the rest of the time? Had this bill gone south, that what might did, have been it for the Congress. Chad, you're always saying, had this bill. It didn't go south. Good night, God bless you, Carson <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your message? What's your message?